Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for watching The Girl Boss Next Door. This is Jill Santibanez, and we have... Hi, I'm Rachel George. Hi, I'm Valeria Sweet. Hi, Hi Valeria. Valeria. <laughs> Today's Girl Boss is Valeria Sweet. She is the author of The Most Wanted One in the World. How to be the one to meet the one. Woo! Yeah, show us the book. I love it. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. This is the book cover. <laughs> That's amazing. Congratulations. It's a, it's a beautiful yeah. book cover. It's a beautiful book. And you're a beautiful lady. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. This is so awesome. I'm excited about your guys' podcast, video broadcast. <laughs> Thank you. And are you in Los Angeles? I know that you travel a lot. I've been watching your Instagram and, and you're like in North Carolina and you're just traveling everywhere. Yeah, I'm in Los Angeles. I live in downtown and then my family is in North Carolina, so I visit them as you know as much as I can so amazing so you're back and forth west and east coast good for you yeah you know a couple of times a year three times a year yeah <laughs> and you're also besides an author you're actually a filmmaker too can we talk about that really fast you're an actress you're a filmmaker besides a, a, an awesome author sure yeah I'm very multi-passionate <laughs> Yeah, um, so I started from modeling, graduated into acting and writing and producing, directing, and then the book came along a couple of years ago. So kind of like from writing, I decided to journal more and kind of like have a blog. And then uh, from that, I saw that a lot of people resonated with like relationship and love coaching series. So I decided to write a book on how to meet the one. And then I also have a second book called the book of soulmates but yeah that's for the next time <laughs> oh, wow so okay so I mean you've always been a writer as well tell us what inspired you to write this particular book because this is definitely a love book this is about the soul about the heart about finding the one um tell us your journey about how you came to write all your amazing experiences down and how this has helped other people yeah, it first started as something that I would talk to my sister about because she talked to me about, you know, her dating life. I was already in a relationship for a long time. Um, and so I thought, you know, if maybe I could write a book, I could help more people because not everybody has the advantage of like knowing me personally or asking a question or um, not everybody's even like brave enough to ask somebody that they either know or don't know something that they want to know. So I wanted to just kind of put everything out there that I knew, all the dating tips, um, you know, all of my mishaps, because I'm sure that resonates a lot, you know, when you know that someone, not, I mean, no one's perfect. So like, I've been through a lot of like, dates and relationship that were not perfect for me. And so I talk actually in my book a lot about how you can know that someone is the one within two weeks. Wow. So, yeah, and it's interesting because like how I formed the book, the, like the first third of it is how to know yourself first. So we talk about all of your, you know, enoughness, how to know that, um, you know, you're confident enough to like to take the next step, but you don't have to be perfect. You can like, you know, meanwhile, be dating and been in a relationship. You can even be in a marriage right now. Um, but then you have to kind of figure out what do you want in your partner? And you have to be all these things as well, because they're going to want, you know, a list of things that they want. So, that they, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. right. So, so I, mean, I love I, that. I do too. Um, I love that it's not just about what I want, but it's about what my you know, future partner wants to. It's not selfish. It's not, okay, I'm going to find somebody. They're going to solve all my problems, you know. Um, but as you just said, it's about being the one. It's, it's even in the title of the book, you know, how to be the one first before you can then meet the one. I really love so that important. kind of awake, that a spiritually charged um, message about knowing what you want and who you are first. Yeah, it's interesting because... It is in the title. Some people miss it completely, which is fine. No, um, I didn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because they say, you know, when you write a book or you make something for people, give them what they think that they want immediately. Mm. So, you know, people want to meet the one. So that's what the book is about. But you're also giving them what they need 
and that what they uh-huh. need is like no like that confidence and knowing that what you need is already inside you you don't need to go outside of yourself you know you don't need to keep outsourcing all the questions and answers you just have to look inside you know sit sit with yourself be with yourself know what you want out of life out of your partner what makes you happy not what makes your mom happy or your family you know right so So what would you say to somebody who they're not really sure what they're looking for. They're not sure what they want. Maybe they've had a few bad days. I, you know, I'm thinking of some of my single friends, you know, I, mm-hmm. I have in mind. Perhaps they don't really know what they want because they've not yet met maybe a true version of themselves or they've only had maybe a few bad dates. How can your book inspire somebody like that or guide somebody to help them, um, you know, take the, the next step? Mm-hmm. So some of the things that I talk about is how, so we do the one exercise where we list like the qualities we want in a person that are not physical attributes, but more like inner qualities. So if you don't yet know what kind of person you want, it, I mean, it it has to do with anything you want in general, whether it's a job, whether it's a person, whether it's a house, you start from, you know, a generic, very general idea and you write down, you know, well, I want them to be responsible. Like, you know, like what are some of the qualities that you value? Um, and then you can look at things that you've liked in the people that you've dated and focus on the good qualities and write them down. You know, well, I like that they introduced me to their mom and like, I like their mom. Like, it'd be great to like, like their parents and for them to like me, you know. Or if you're like an animal person and it's really important for you to, you know, for them to be an animal person, you write that down, you know, must love dogs or whatever. Uh, which is funny because that was one of the things that I wrote down on my list when I was like 15 years old. And How my funny. husband is like the biggest dog lover ever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, you know, you go from the generic and very general and then you get more specific with each person you meet. And you're like, mm-hmm. OK, well, that was cool. But I also want the romantic connection now. And I want like the soulful of- connection. So you get just more clear with every person that you meet. Right. And people, yeah, and people need to feel like they kind of have that connection with somebody, but they also need to feel like, you know, they're complete inside before they go out and look for somebody to complete them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you kind of want them, you know, to fill your gaps as well, you know? So, yeah. yeah. We expect so much from one other person. It's almost like that other person is just another human being with, you know, with flaws and with doubts and with insecurities. And we've all come from somewhere to get to where we are. So it's like, you know, you almost kind of can step back and look at other people, you know, when they're going through something and they they tell you, you know, their woes or their dating, you know, problems. And you think, well, you know, almost sometimes you could hold up a mirror and say, you know, who are you talking about? You know, you are we talking about this person that's almost like God, you know, that you think that, that they're capable of just solving all these problems, but they're just flawed, like like everybody is. They're just people, um, yeah. Yeah, they're just people, you know. It's like, hold mm-hmm. on one second. You know, this is possibly the love of your life, but this person is also, you know, another soul that needs love as well, that just needs right. healing as well. And you can't ask for more from somebody that you're not already giving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is not your average dating guide at all. Um, I feel like this book is definitely for somebody who is uh, a stage where they're more awake, they're more progressed and they're ready to really work on themselves. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, definitely. And even if they're not, it will definitely, you know, inform them because Even though I speak nicely, I definitely shine light on like things that you should look at. Like a couple of times in the book, I say, you know, decide for yourself. Are you actually looking for the one? Are you just looking for an adventure or are you looking to date? Because sometimes people will say, no, no, you know, I'm ready for marriage. But then they end up dating all these people just for fun Um, or, you know, they're not really looking at like themselves and like problems that they might need to solve before and like heal themselves within. And um, so I always ask people, are you sure you're ready? Um, You know, are you sure that's what you want? Um, So it's 
important to know the difference and like have that clarity within yourself. So yeah, I would say that it's good to take responsibility. And whether you're reading, you know, this book as a person who is aware of like, you know, what you're looking for or not yet, I think I feel like this book walks you through very simply. And um, I know I've had people read it, you know, from people who are like 15, 16, and they like really enjoyed it. And, and then I've had people who are like in their 50s read it. And they're like, oh my gosh, like, how did you come to knowing this like so early in your life? Because we're all at different stages in our life. You know, some people are so wise when they're 15 and some people, you know, yeah. are still learning. So yeah. it doesn't matter what stage of your life it is. And also, I've had a lot of, you know, my friends who've read this book and now they have met people who I'm sure that they're probably going to marry. But I'm not going to like I'm not saying that it's because of the book. But as you go through life, you pick up things that you need to learn. And it might have been just like one little piece. Maybe they read one sentence that kind of clicked and then, yeah. they, then they learned something else because it's, you know, following kind of like all the interests and following like this little chain reaction of things. So, yeah. And, and I was lucky enough to meet uh, TJ on the red carpet of the Nashville Film Festival. Uh, he had a show and I was actually uh, there at the film festival with the show that I produced and acted in. And he wanted to interview me. He was with uh, TMZ and then he also created a show. So he's like, oh, wow. yeah, he was there and he was, he was just like, and that was like a, a great opening move to talk to me, you know, and, and I was like, this this person's really nice. And then we became friends and we were friends first before we started dating. And then we realized that, you know, our, our work ethics were similar. And really, it's like, you know, you put yourself in a position where you do what you love. And then somebody that loves kind of the same thing, right? They, mm -hmm. they kind of appear and you're just like, wow, this is amazing. But I mean, I guess like my, for me and what I tell people, just because I was lucky enough to find the one, I say, you know, just do what you love. And then that person will just, you know, be there, but make sure you're friends first, like make sure, like we were telling uh, one of our other guests that is, is finding love, still trying to find love, you know, just make sure that you, you can have a conversation with this person. Like you can go to a restaurant and it's totally natural. It's not like you're trying to find something to talk about. Like you have nothing in common. Like, what do you tell people? Because I do have another friend actually, um, in Nashville that she's still kind of doing the whole like dating thing and she can't find somebody like it's just I think it's it's it depends on like if you're shy you know which I'm glad that I grew out of because if, if you're shy it's definitely difficult like what do you say for shy people that are trying to get out there and they just don't know like where to look or meet people yeah I actually have like a little section in my book Ooh. Like, like where to meet <laughs> the, the inside. there we go um, but especially, I mean, right now it's like, you know, quarantine, so it's harder to meet people. Mm, I sure. definitely, definitely suggest being friends first. I think you're very right on that. But you can meet people through your friends. Just make sure that they're actually like good friends with those people. Because I know that I've been hurt by people who are like, oh, yeah, this is the coolest guy. And then they're like, yeah, you're just cool to dudes, but she's not a good person to, you know, yeah. girls. Um <laughs> And then um, also online, I think social media has really opened up like the whole world to us. I know I met my husband on Facebook, not, I mean, I knew of him before that, but like our connector was Facebook. And I know I've met like my other boyfriends on like other social media before that as well. So I think just like, you know, having a conversation, just like you said, like something that connects both of you and you can see from the social media what they're like what their friends might be like what they're into like how they show up in the world things that they post if you're an activist like if that's really important to you you can see that you know if they're the same um or like for example if you're in the entertainment industry then you can see like you know how do they react like to you getting the attention if they're not in the industry you know it's like it's very interesting way of like getting your end before you might even talk to them and then you know you like you comment and then you kind of can message them or something like I think that's um a good way for people who are shy or introverted especially during this time right yeah. and it's, <laughs> can I just say it's so funny how um because we wear masks so much and we don't really know what 
like people look like Isn't and we funny? just we just kind of fill in what they face might yeah. be and take off their mask and you're like well, you do not look exactly like what I thought you <laughs> what <is> catfishing <laughs> that's funny I know my grandma and my uh, cousin that live in California they saw each other at the grocery store and my cousin Seth was like grandma and my grandma was like Seth <laughs> <laughs> but the other masks on but of course you know you if it's your family you like know who it is you know they just live like 10 minutes away from each other but it was just so funny I'm like that's 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 cute that's really cute oh it's adorable <laughs> yeah it's really sweet like I know what my grandma looks like you know it doesn't she whatever she's wearing I know what she looks like yeah it's really sweet yeah, thank you so much for sharing your insight. I know that people are gonna love this book, especially when they're trying to find love, when they're trying to find the their their one, right? Because the, there there is one out there for everybody. I totally believe that with my heart because I'm I'm blessed enough to have that, and I know Rachel is too. With Andy, we have some wonderful men in our life, and so are you. I'm I'm so happy that you found the one, and you can share your expertise with others, and and that's wonderful that people will actually you know listen and take that to heart because I know that everybody wants to find somebody. Yeah, it's interesting because I also believe, you know, like you said, that everybody is meant for someone. Um, but I also want to add um, for people who might not believe in that, because not everybody believes in marriage or, you know, and you don't have to think of it as marriage. You, you know, a forever partner or right. just, you know, your person, like you don't have to like be so rigid. I think sometimes it might um I guess like spook some people, um, sure. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, I totally think that there is somebody out there for somebody. And even you know, for people that are watching who have been in relationships where they thought they had met the one, and they might think, you know, they might feel discouraged maybe um, that they might not meet somebody again. You will meet somebody again, and you will meet somebody even better. That's the thing, like keep focusing on you focusing you know on what you want and the right person will appear yeah which totally goes back to what jill said that's exactly what happened to jill <laughs> yeah. and i wasn't even looking for it i mean yeah. of course you know you put it out there in your mind and in your heart like you know eventually of course i want it to happen but you have to focus on you first right like you have to put yourself in the position where you're able to receive that love back. Like you have to be your best self, basically. Fill your cup as much as you can. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. You have to love yourself first, you know, because if you don't love yourself, then people will see that, you know, you're undervaluing yourself. And when you love yourself and you're happy and that's how you show up in the world, you have more love to give. And when you yeah, have love to give, Rachel. you're you're drawing more people to you. I think you that's attract exactly it. Right. Yeah. You attract the energy that you that you put out for sure. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. I want to ask how Rachel met Andy. I've never asked you guys that question. How'd you guys meet? Um, we actually met on vacation. <laughs> really? Ooh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, it was um, it was kind of awkward because my family was there. My, I mean, my family, my grandma, you know, <laughs> my mom, my brother. I mean, yeah, and then his family were actually there at the same time, which was really strange because he was part of the um the theater production and uh wow. but his mom was there too and his dad was there as well and we would it was just it was very strange um it was a little bit embarrassing too but my grandma doesn't care and she's like oh look <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like a cute guy oh my um, goodness. yeah but it, i think you know after that kind of vacation ended um i ended up um moving down to London anyway, because I was pursuing theater as well. So it was nice to kind of meet somebody who at that time, you know, was, um, you know, writing and producing and doing their own shows and, you know, enjoyed the same things that I was doing because I was still in, in school at the time for theater. So that was kind of the connection then. Um, but yeah, it was so funny. I, I My grandmother was just, I mean, she just thought the whole thing was so funny. <laughs> she was so I mean she knew how embarrassing she was but she didn't care oh was she like go meet the guy <laughs> yeah, yeah go I talk know. to him go talk to him <laughs> yeah yeah I know mm -hmm. that's, that's so, so cute. cute so 
Um, Valerie, have you always been like a guru? Have people always just naturally come to you for dating advice? Is that kind of how Great I question. feel? That you're, yeah, I feel like that's who you are. Have you always been that friend? <laughs> like they always tell you their problems. You're like the bartender. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, ever since I was like 14 years old, people would tell me their, you know, they would share their relationship stuff. And it was before I even was dating. So it was like, I felt like a very wise 14 year old, probably wiser than I am now. Um, sometimes you just like know, you know, sometimes there's some things in you that you just know. And so I would give them advice, I would just like give them you know, encouragement. And yeah, I think I was kind of like a therapist, I guess, for my friends at first. That's how we started. <laughs> That's cool. So <laughs> this no, I know, I know we always... Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Your friends are like, yeah, I was waiting for her to write this book. <laughs> I know. They're probably wondering if they're in the book too, like as an example. <laughs> what to do and what not to do. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I We always ask our uh, our guests if, if they have any insight, especially because you wrote this book, which is an amazing accomplishment. And I know that people are out there that either aspire to write a book or aspire to be a filmmaker or an actress. Are there any tips that you can give people? Yeah, I think just going for it. Um, one of my favorite quotes is that the time will pass anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether you do it now or you do it five years from now if this burning desire is still within you like you need to act on it and um i think following your interests and hobbies is really really important because even though it might not you know kind of spit you out where you want it sometimes it will lead to other things and the body in motion stays in motion and that like the same thing you know goes for your professional life as long as you're working in something you'll either meet people or like you'll work with other people and they'll open your eyes on like some other new subject and you'll just keep following this like chain of you know events and you'll end up somewhere interesting and i just wanted to give an example i guess um, and this is from the relationship stand, like um, me, my husband and I were talking about it the other day and I was like, you know why I met you, right? I met you because I was really into Sweden, the country, for like oh, really? a year and a half. Yeah. Um, I had this like burning desire to go to Sweden. I still haven't been, um, which I think like was just kind of an excuse for me to meet him. Um, right like from the divine or whatever but so I like really wanted to know everything about Sweden I like bought dictionaries I set my Facebook to like Swedish language I changed my name like crown princess and Valeria like because they have like a crown princess Victoria so that was funny um, <laughs> and then I had remembered that um, my husband's like former band they did a video in Sweden and then I remembered about him and That's like, cool. and then I ended up sending him like a Facebook message. So like a chain reaction of that. And I met him and now I don't even like Sweden is not that exciting for me, but that was <laughs> you know, a way. So always follow your interests because like, even though in the moment, like you might not know why you're so interested in it, it's going to uh -huh. get you somewhere. So thank you guys. And this is so exciting. I'm so excited about this. I hope you guys have many, many, many episodes. Thank you. Yeah. Let's, let's tell everybody where they can find you, where they can connect with you on social media, because I know that you're on Instagram, you have a Facebook page, you're of course on Amazon, but let's let's talk about it really fast. Sure. So my Instagram is Valeria Sweet Official. My blog slash website where you can also, you know, get my book in different formats. You can get like paperback or you can get ebook or audiobook. It's thesweetpost.com. And then, yeah, if you want to find my book on Amazon, just type in the most wanted one in the world or type in Valeria Sweet and it should come up. That's amazing. Yay. The most wanted one in the world. I love it so much. Thank you so much once again for joining us on the Girl Boss Next Door. And our Girl Boss today was Valeria Sweet. Thank you for joining us. Thank you guys so much. So good to see you. <laughs> you too. I'm Rachel George. Jill Santibanez and Valeria Sweet. <laughs> Thank you.